Today for our gospel reading, uh, we sort of jump right in the middle of Mark. We're at Mark chapter 6. And what is happening is Jesus is traveling around. And Jesus, we think, spends most of his ministry time around the Sea of Galilee and particularly living in the city of Capernaum. And Jesus has done some things there, and then he decides to go and walk with his disciples. Uh, he heads southwest to kind of the southwest corner of the region of Galilee in his hometown, which we know as Nazareth. And Jesus ends up walking there with his disciples, and we get this wonderful story out of chapter 6 of Mark. After he leaves the Sea of Galilee and Capernaum, and walks down to Nazareth, we get this story from Mark 6. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Eustace, and Judas, and Simon? And, not, and are not his sisters with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deeds of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, Shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's such a wonderful story that Jesus is teaching around the Sea of Galilee and, and all of a sudden he goes home to Nazareth and yet they reject him. They take offense, it says, and they don't want to hear what he has to say. It's really interesting that he's in his hometown and people know him there and yet those are the people that reject him. The story right before this is him in Capernaum and the, one of the synagogue leaders comes to him and just begs him to come and see his daughter. And on the way, a woman touches his cloak and is healed. And, and on the way, the little girl dies. And yet he goes in there and he raises her. And there's all these villages that Jesus will attend, to, uh, attend or at least walk through and he will end up healing people. And, and Crowds will follow him and push him out onto a boat because there are so many. And yet when he goes home, they reject him. They take offense, really, is what it says. I find it fascinating that this is what happens because these are the people who actually know him. In fact, that's kind of the reason that they reject him. All of their questions are, isn't he just a carpenter? Don't we know his sister and his brother and his friends? Didn't he grow up here? How can this be? They don't believe him. And we might be able to chalk it up to just, well, some people don't believe and some people do. And maybe that's the case. But I find it really interesting that it's actually the people who know him the best that end up rejecting his work. And then because they reject him, it says he really can't do much and he just heals a few people, but it's not the commotion that you get in Capernaum, 
It's not the commotion that you get in those little villages around the Sea of Galilee. Rather, it says he really couldn't do all the deeds of power because they rejected him. And this is the only place in the Gospels that I can find where Jesus is actually in like a state of wonderment at their unbelief. Some people that I read about this story actually called it an unmiracle story because all of these other villages are experiencing these miracles, and yet here it's sort of an unmiracle where he doesn't perform a lot of miracles and they're not chasing him around wanting to just touch the hem of his garment. We have to be really careful with this scripture, and I think I have to be careful with this scripture because if it is the people who know Jesus that reject him. I was thinking about who is it now who knows Jesus. And I would claim to know Jesus. Many Christians around the world in our churches, they end up being Jesus' kin, followers, brothers, and sisters. In fact, it says that uh, they know where he lives and they can't, uh, they, can't, they reject him because they know his house and his sister and all that. And, and on some level, I feel like we are almost Jesus' hometown in the church. And we become the people that know Christ, or at least think we know Christ the best, and yet that's the people who reject. I wonder if sometimes we Christians who claim to know what God loves and what God wants and who Jesus is and who Jesus loves and who Jesus wants to be with, end up rejecting the very work of God in the world because in some weird way we know him so well that we actually won't let God work the same way that the people in Nazareth did. I was attending a uh, small church when I was in divinity school and uh, I, took my, uh, I took my wife and my family there and we were there and we went in and we, we spent a couple of Sundays and then there were some friends there that um, were a part of this church and we went out to lunch and, you know, the church just seemed to have a feel that was just not right. There was something there. There was some hurt there or some pain and the church had once been vibrant and then all of a sudden there was just a few people there and we ended up going out to lunch with uh, some people in the church. and. You know, as it happens, you end up talking about what's going on in church. And they told us, they told me a story that uh, about a year before we had showed up, they got into an argument. And really what it was about was somebody had got the church bus and started going to the low-income housing neighborhoods and picking up all of the little kids and bringing them to church. And it filled their church overflowing with children that would come and they would make several trips and they would show up with all of these kids. And yet the people there, some of the people, the people who knew Christ, who were the ones who had always been at that church, became a little aggravated because the kids didn't look like them. They probably didn't smell like them or they probably just didn't act like them. They were different. They had not grown up in church, some of them. And even though the church was overflowing with people, it wasn't the people that they thought God wanted at that church. So what happened was they sort of split and things were said and it really just didn't work out very well. And that church had this sort of deep wound in it because God was trying to work by sending them all those children, and yet the people who were closest to Christ did not see the work of God the way some others did. I wonder if sometimes that happens in our churches, that God is trying to work and Jesus walks into the midst of the church, and yet we think we know what God loves and what God wants, and we miss him. But the story doesn't end there. Jesus then leaves Nazareth and he goes to these other villages and yet he calls his disciples and he sends them out two by two and he says, you go and do the work that I have been doing. Don't take anything, no money, no nothing. Just take a staff, put some sandals on and go for a walk and start going into all those little villages and telling people they can be made whole by repenting or turning around. 
and thinking differently. That's where this pericope, or this, that's where this story ends, is not with Jesus being rejected, but with some people in the world that did not claim to know too much. And I think the disciples, that's one of their virtues, is they did not claim to know very much. In fact, they're not supposed to even take anything, and God sends them out. So it seems to me that in this story we have some that reject and don't actually see the work of God, and yet there are others who don't need much but just the command of God to go into the world and make people whole, to encourage them to turn around and to see Jesus. I wonder if that's really the call sometimes for us Christians, is not to know too much because it can get us in trouble if we think, what God, we think we know what God loves or what God wants, but instead to just participate in what God is already doing in all the towns and communities around us. So I encourage you, think about where it is that we stand and where it is that you stand. Do we become the people who can't see Jesus in our midst and he wonders at our unbelief? Or can we be the disciples? who are sent out to participate in what God is already doing. Let's be those people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.